Hey everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, I won't be doing any Feynman integration today. Instead, what I wanted to do is kind of just, uh, I wanted to feature this integral on my channel. It's a pretty popular, uh, difficult integral. Um, it doesn't have uh, any sort of elementary representation, but there's kind of a nice infinite sum representation. So I just wanted to go through the process of solving this, and we will be using infinite sums to solve this. Okay, so the first thing we want to realize is that x to the x can be written e to the natural log of x to the x. The e and the natural log just cancel out. And then we can bring that x outside of the natural log to get e to the x natural log x. Next, we rewrite our integral using that fact. So now our integral is just the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x natural log x dx. Next, we're going to use the uh, Taylor series representation for e to the x, which is good for x, uh, for all x, negative infinity to infinity, and that's equal to the sum uh, to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. Well, this implies that e to the x natural log x is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x natural log x all to the n over n factorial. In this case, we just replaced our x in our first sum with x natural log x. Now this will not be good from negative infinity to infinity because obviously we cannot put negative numbers inside a natural log, but it's good for the positive numbers. So we're still all right. Okay, so next I uh, rewrote the integral using the fact that e to the x natural log x is equal to that sum. And I just replaced e to the x natural log x with the sum. The next thing I did is I switched the, um, the bounds of integration and summation and also brought out that 1 over n factorial outside of the integral uh, because our integral is with respect to x. Therefore, um, in regards to the integral, 1 over n factorial would simply be a constant. Next, I make the following substitution. I, made, I, I let x equal e to the negative u, which implies that dx is equal to negative e to the negative u du. Let's pull down a little bit. So um, subbing uh, e to the negative u in for x, um, we get the following. Um, the bounds of integration change from uh, infinity to zero, and you can see I just literally replaced the uh, x with an e to the negative u, um, the dx with a negative d, uh, e to the negative u du. So that's the that's the first step in performing our substitution, and next I simplify. That's, that's what it works out to be um, after all the simplification. You can see we use this negative sign here to switch the bounds of integration, and you can work that out for yourself. That's, that's the simplified version of our substitution. Um, so, after that, um, we make the following substitution. Uh, we will let w equal u to the 1 plus n, and the, the uh, motivation for that is to get just one variable in our exponent here. So, um, this u to the 1 plus n would just become a w. Well, that, that implies that u is equal to w over 1 plus n, um, and that also implies that our du is equal to 1 over n plus 1 dw. All right, uh, performing that substitution, you can see I just directly substituted everything in. We have our u to the n plus 1. That just becomes a w. Um, we have our u, which is w over n, or uh, 1 plus n. I uh, replaced that u with that and raised it to the n power. And then replaced our du with 1 over n plus 1 dw. And next, you can see, um, I recognize that this is n plus 1 to the n, but then we have an additional factor of n plus 1, so that's really an n plus one to the n plus one, which I brought side, which I which I brought outside of our integration since it's independent of w. So what we're left with is just e to the negative w times w 
to the end right there. And then we have this stuff outside the integral and we're summing it all up, of course. Now, um, this, this uh, integral right here should be very familiar to you. Um, that is actually uh, equal to n factorial. And I've shown that a couple times on this channel. I'm not going to go over why that's true. Um, I use Feynman integration to show it. Uh, but that, that's a fairly well-known thing, especially if you like Feynman integration and you've watched my channel um, for a while, you'll, you'll pretty much recognize this right away. So this is equivalent to n factorial, which is nice because that allows us to cancel this n factorial. This whole thing is just an n factorial. So that cancels this n factorial, leaving us with this sum right here which I simply uh, I, I simplify to this sum. Basically what I did from here to here is just took uh, one away. I, I took one away from the ends inside the sum, or in this case, I, I added them. But these two things are equivalent. Um, and that's it, guys. That's, that's the answer. I believe that's as good an answer as you can get to that integral. Um, there are... Pretty much every math YouTube channel has uh, has done this integral before, so I didn't want to be left out, so I figured I'd, uh, I'd go ahead and do it, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you next time.